Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you in his name. We're so glad you chose to join us today, either in person or online or by video later today. Uh, my name is Pastor Jim, and um, I'm so glad you're here to worship with us. We are celebrating the Lord's Supper today, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, invites all those who accept him as Lord and Savior to join in the feast that he has prepared. It will be at the end of our service, so please prayerfully join us for that celebration. And I think we have a couple of announcements. Gloria has one. Yeah. Good morning. Um, next month, um, we will be having another couple's dinner for the church. It will be on December 11th at 5 p.m. Couples and singles by themselves, or if they would like to bring a guest, they're more than welcome. Uh, dinner is on your own. And um, we will be um, going to the uh, new Mexican restaurant that used to be Atria's on Route 8 in Gibsonia. So that will be our next dinner. Um, and that will be the, 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 the last one for the year. And um, Denise has put a sign-up sheet. If you're interested, um, in the back of the sanctuary, back where you can sign up for things, okay? And also, um, real quick, number two, um, Do you know these good -looking people? I run a book club uh, that meets here once a month, the last Wednesday um, of the month at 3 p.m., and um, we're called The Reading Martians, and we'll be starting back up again that there's a, a slide about it um, today. If any of you would like to come to the, the gathering um, that we do at Springfield on the uh, 7th at 1 p.m., you're more than welcome. If you are interested in possibly um, joining us, we welcome new members. Um, we have a fun time, and I lead the discussion. And um, we would... You know, like I said, if anybody's interested and you love to read and would like to join us, I want you to know, you, you know you're more than welcome. Just get in touch with me and let me know. My number's on the slide or in the um, directory. Thank you. Thank you, Gloria. I have to apologize for my voice. I'm a little congested trying to fight off this cold. So I apologize ahead of time if it sounds like I'm talking out of a barrel. Um, uh, but bear with me. Um, the only thing, other thing I wanted to mention was our congregational meeting is next Sunday, the 13th, right after worship. And you all should be receiving a letter, if you haven't already, about that, that meeting um, for election of new officers, uh, for reception of the, the budget for 2023, and for approving your pastor's terms of call for next year. So please join us for that meeting next week, right after worship. Today we're going to be talking about faith practices, and in spite of what your mother told you about practice makes perfect, in a lot of things, and most things in our lives, that is true. In our faith lives, that is not true. Faith practices will not make you a perfect person, no matter what you do. But it will make you mature in Jesus Christ, help make you mature in Jesus Christ. So we're going to talk about what that means um, in our daily lives um, today in a bit. Um, so let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Thank you. 
Good morning. David writes in Psalm 145, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and exalt your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell you of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. <clears throat> Excuse me. Please join me in singing our opening hymn as we stand together, if able. Your servant comes this hour. this hour in true humility living in your call O God and answering God send me your servant kneels in prayer awaiting from above out of Jesus for pedestals of love. Your servant stands this day implanted in the world. Prepare to share the holy truth, proclaim it lamp and sword. You may be seated. Christian worship is filled with profound actions, heads bowed in prayer, arms raised in praise, standing in reference during a scripture reading, coming forward to give an offering. One ancient and significant gesture in worship is the passing of the peace. Passing the peace is a tradition rooted in scripture that embodies our identity as peacemakers and trains our hearts, hands, and tongues in the ways of peace. Please extend this peace to each other. The peace of Christ be with all of you. I'm Max. I mean, not Max. Zach. It's good to see old familiar faces back and new familiar faces. Welcome. This is our call to worship. Let us draw near to God with sincerity of heart and full assurance of faith. Our guilty hearts sprinkled clean, our bodies washed with pure water. Hebrews 10:22. Let us confess our sins before God in silent prayer today. Take a few moments to pray to God and admit your sins. Assurance of forgiveness. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us, 
He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our inequities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. In him we are forgiven. Children's Message with Mary Snow. Thank you. All right. How long is a day? 24 hours. Good answer. Go ahead. It's actually 24 hours and one fourth. Yeah, he's just going to like try to be a technicality. So how long are you in school for? Eight hours. Eight hours in a 24-hour day. That's, that sounds like a long time, doesn't it? Do you ever look up at the clock? A, a lot. I like that. I like, and what does the clock do? Because I remember this a lot from school. When you're looking at the clock, what's it do? Tell us how much longer school is. Okay, that's one good answer. Go ahead. Uh, the arms move. The arms move. I remember watching how slow those on. And honest to goodness, sometimes I felt like those arms moved backwards. Like, wait a minute. That was like an hour and a half ago, and it's only been three minutes. Did you ever that? Did that ever happen? So today we're talking in Peter. Peter's like a letter that is written by Paul, correct? Right? I got that down. Peter? Peter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, wait. I meant by Peter because mm. it's called Peter. My, mm. you know, nobody's perfect. So, anyway, he wrote this long letter. And in it, the preacher's going to talk about like this much of the letter. Like, like that much. Like three stanzas. But whenever I get ready for this, I like to read the whole entire chapter. And when I do, like, it points out stuff to me, and it talks about time. Do you know how God, long God says a day is? Go ahead, try it, AJ. A very long time. Oh my gosh, so long. <laughs> like, so long. It's a thousand years. A thousand years. That's actually why I wore my dinosaur shirt, because, you know, there's dinosaur, and he's an astronaut. Because we didn't have dinosaurs during astronaut time right right but I wore this shirt to be like time doesn't matter and some pretty lucky humans understand that but as humans we tend to forget it there's this thing called patience <sighs> it's something I yeah right there yeah, yeah 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 he's like patience is a really hard one it's definitely one as a human I don't have really good uh, patience isn't my strong suit but God wants us to be patient. And the biggest reason God has patience is for us. 
because we don't always do what's right. And he wants to give us enough time to figure it out and get it. Because now, sometimes when I'm looking at time as someone who's not in school, I wish I could hold that ticking hand and not let it move. Because time now that I'm literally so ancient, like, goes so fast that you're not a baby anymore. You're not little anymore. And I got teenage girls wearing ripped jeans that I used to wear when I was a teenage girl. And, and you just, you want it to slow down. So in one sentence, Peter says that time, one day, equals a thousand years. But then the very next sentence, he says a thousand years equals one day. And you're like, what? How does that make sense? But patience is how that makes sense. Now, as I've already been talking for two and a half minutes, holding a rock, I'm sure everyone's like, why she got a rock? Tyler, will you stand up here and be awesome? Will you take the rock, hold it on both sides together, push it, okay? Now, this rock, way over, like super old. Like, I, I, I don't even know how to say how old. Pretty ugly rock though, right? Wouldn't you say it's pretty ugly? But time made that rock, and God made time. God made patience. God had the patience to make that rock. As a human, I don't have the patience. Tyler, use your man strength and open that rock up. Show everybody that rock. That's pure mineral deposits. That's the purity of what, why don't you just walk around so they can see how pretty, ah, oh, ooh, it is. There you go, thanks. That's the patience of God. That's how beautiful God's work is. I like to make things. I like to make crafts. I like to, you know, do and create. I make a mess. I make a lot of messes. My stuff has a ton of imperfections. I don't like to clean my house, but you can see that we live in our house and that I try to clean it and never be good enough at it, but try. With God's patience, eventually I'll get it. God made that happen. That's what God makes in you, and all he's waiting for for you is for you to get it and understand it. And he has all the patience in the world. For you, one day, a thousand years. For him, a thousand days, or a thousand years, just one day. It goes so quick. Fold your hands, close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all that you do for us, that some days just go by way too fast. Help us get through the long days, the tests, the quizzes, the driving commutes to work. Help us to realize that every second counts in the redemption that you want us to give to you, in the surrender of our lives for what your goal is, because your time, Lord, is limitless. In your name we all say... The prayer for illumination is guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, and in your truth find wisdom, and in your will discover your peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand with our sermon hymn, Thy Word, if you're able. And a 
Old Testament reading is Proverbs 16, 6 through 9. Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, evil is avoided. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he causes their enemies to make peace with them. Better a little with righteousness than much gain with injustice. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord established their steps. We have been discussing for several weeks this process or model of discipleship called core discipleship that Jesus gave us and lived out for us. From the readings of various passages in scripture over these weeks, we've discovered some truths about, uh, about us living as a core disciple of Jesus in the world. For those of you who have not been with us each week, we began by discussing how this model for discipleship was given to us by Jesus himself. And the fact that there is no plan B for God's will in this world. It's you and I. That's the only plan. It's up to us. Then we moved into God's vision for each of us and what it really means to love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, and all your soul. A couple of weeks ago, we learned from the early church about the four keys to growing God's kingdom and what it means to devote ourselves to those things. Last week, we read about and realized how our faith, love, and service all involve us giving outside of ourselves, which is the work of ministry that we're all called to do. So, it's been a journey, hasn't it? Just like this model of core discipleship is a long journey, which requires us to practice certain disciplines on that journey. This series of messages that, that I have put together and preached is probably the longest series of messages I've ever written and ever preached. And that's okay because perhaps it's the most important of any series of messages that I've ever preached. As followers in our lives of Jesus Christ, we're presented with challenges, with victories, with obstacles, and with answers. So our discipleship can be a joyful journey through all of those things. And friends, that will make the joy of the Lord your and my strength. 
So today, please read with me from Peter's second letter, chapter 3, verses 14 to 18, as we then discuss the critical practices of our faith, some of them. So listen to God's word. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures, to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you have, not, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. May God bless our hearing of his word this day. Would you please pray with me? Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me while I grab a cough drop. So for those of you who think of yourselves as practical or doers, these practices could seem very attractive to you. I mean, every one of us at some time or another desires to do something to achieve a goal, right? We might all consider ourselves doers, even though that's not all of our gifts. Some of us may think that we have to do something if we want to make a difference in the world. Others of us might hesitate to do anything very quickly because we've learned to be cautious about jumping in immediately to do anything. There is a phrase that says, practice makes perfect, that has been used for so long that it has become part of most of us, if not all of us. And after all, we do see some positive results from some of our practices. However, in our faith, as I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> practices do not make us perfect. They do strengthen us, they do motivate us, they do inform us, and they can even draw us closer to God. But they don't make us perfect or flawless. We can never be flawless or sinless because we're human and there is sin in every one of us. So here's the challenge. And I know most of you have recognized this challenge. In our responsibility of helping God make disciples, you and I are called to help others to be perfect in Jesus Christ. Well, that presents us with a problem, right? How can any of us help each other to be perfect in Christ when none of us is perfect? The answer lies in the meaning of the word perfect. Perfect in this context, and Paul writes that word in one of his letters, does not mean flawless or sinless. Rather, it means complete, or mature in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul says it this way in Colossians, we announce the message about Christ and we use all our wisdom to warn and to teach everyone so all of Christ's followers will grow and become mature. Now that's the message version. Other versions say perfect in Jesus Christ, 
The original language says complete or mature in Jesus Christ. So I want us to focus today on three critical faith practices because there are lots of faith practices, lots and lots, and we don't have time to talk about every one. So I wanna, th I wanna focus on three, what I consider to be critical faith practices. Number one, being spirit-led. Number two, studying God's word. And number three, prayer. <clears throat> now you might think, why only three? Aren't there a lot of faith practices, and why are these three critical? Well, let's consider each one separately, because each one of these three will lead to others. Can't help it. It will happen. If you practice any one of these three, or all three of them, it will lead to other faith practices. They are all connected by God, I'm sure you realize. So there is a connection between all three. The first critical practice, though, is being spirit-led. And if there is any book of the Bible that is practical for our living, it's the book of Proverbs. If any of you have read any of the book of Proverbs, very pointed, direct, practical advice from King Solomon, right? In our reading today, from Proverbs chapter 16, did you notice the main idea in, that, in those verses, that God is in control? That's the main idea of that passage. No matter whether we realize it, accept it, or reject that truth, God is in control because of who God is, not because of anything else. Therefore, it matters a lot if we are spirit-led. God is the spirit. We are told that we need to be available to God's Holy Spirit, and just because you are a believer doesn't necessarily mean that you're automatically spirit-led. Why do you think that is? Make sure you hear this correctly. This does not mean that you or I need more of the Holy Spirit. It's already in us. If you are a Christ follower and have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you already have the Holy Spirit inside of you. However, our part and our challenge is to make ourselves available to God's Holy Spirit inside of us or surrender to God's will in your life, because that's what the Spirit wants. That's the hard part for every one of us, indeed, to make ourselves available, open, obedient to the Spirit. The authors of our core discipleship resource we are using discuss the Greek verb that is translated, be filled with the Holy Spirit. That is our command as Christians to be filled with the Spirit. It's in Scripture. And it has some deep meanings in those Scripture passages. The Apostle Paul speaks of being filled to the point of overflowing so that others see what the Holy Spirit has done, is doing, and will do in your life. They can't help but see it. And being filled with the Spirit does not always happen as the result of our own actions, our own strength, or even our own desire. Rather, the Holy Spirit will fill you up whenever you submit to him and are available to him. It will happen. Therefore, in our daily lives, we need to ask God to refuel us. Refuel your spirit with his spirit. Right? Sometimes hourly. Some days. Because it's critical in our moment by moment living. The second critical faith practice is studying God's word. Now, unless you are a perpetual student... 
and you crave learning, you may not find this practice attractive at all. Some of us never enjoyed being a student, so studying scripture turns us off immediately. But here is some truth that might help you make this a practice for make this a practice for all of us. First, we cannot know what God wants for us, through us, or in us, if we don't open his book, we don't open his word. Secondly, reading it is only the beginning to understanding it. To really understand, we have to study it. We have to reread it. We have to talk to others about reading it. We have to question things. To really understand it, we must study it, either by ourselves or with others, or both. And again, the authors of Core Discipleship make a good point about Scripture when they say, if something was taught by Christ was practiced in the book of Acts and taught in Paul's letters, then it can be properly practiced by the church, big C, every church. God promises great blessings to those who read and obey his word. And I promise you, the more you read it, the more you study it, the more you will want to know it. And knowing doesn't necessarily mean memorizing it. That's easy. Memorization for a lot of people is easy. To know it, you have to study it and know what it means. Here are some basic truths about our scriptures, the Bible or God's word. You may know all of these basics or some of these basics, or maybe you don't know any of these basics, but these will give us or remind us of some basic characteristics of God's Word. Our Bible has 66 books written over 1,500 years in three languages, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek, inspired by the Holy Spirit through 35 different authors, all from various backgrounds. Nobody but God could do that. God's word is divided into two parts. Most of you know that, Old Testament, New Testament, or covenants, Old Covenant, New Covenant. The Old Testament, 39 books, covers history from the creation of the world to 400 years before the birth of Christ. The New Testament, an additional 27 books, covers history from Christ's birth through the apostolic age, A.D. roughly 96, and predicts future events into eternity with Christ at his second coming. The foundation of the church, big C, rests on the teaching of the prophets, Christ Jesus, and the apostles. That's directly out of Paul's letter to the Ephesians. The credibility of the Old Testament in fact, has been tested. For those of you who prefer to read the New Testament, I don't blame you, but the credibility of the Old Testament has been tested and is based primarily on Jesus himself quoting it, recognizing it, and supporting it as God's holy word, written by God's inspired people. Throughout history, God's word has been translated, verified, and analyzed by many inspired people. <clears throat> Today, Christians maintain God's word as the only inspired, error-free, and authoritative revelation from God himself in written form. Peter wrote those words in 2 Peter. So as we read... As we reread, as we study the Bible, we have mentioned several resources to help with this. And I've mentioned some of these before. The original language can be helpful with the use of a study Bible or a commentary, 
or a Bible dictionary. When reading a passage, always try to read a few verses before the passage and then a few verses after the passage. Why do you think that is? Why is that important? That will give you the context of those words, which is important. Consider the author, consider the audience, consider the timing that it was written or what was happening in the world at the time. Lastly, it can be helpful to read similar passages in other parts of the Bible so that Scripture interprets Scripture. That only makes sense. Let Scripture interpret Scripture. So these are all helpful tools for studying the Scriptures, and there are many others available to us in the 21st century. It still surprises me when people pull out their phone and look up a scripture passage. And I do it now. But how many years ago that wasn't possible? Wasn't all that long ago, right? So you can get to scripture quickly. So no excuse for having to find a book, open it up, look up the passage. You can type it in and have it immediately. Finally, The third critical faith practice is prayer. And prayer is by no means the least important of these just because I've put it third. How many of us believe that we have fellowship with God? Fellowship with God. What do I mean by fellowship with God? Well, the short description is dialogue, conversation, listening, and time spent with him. So now that I've given you the definition, how many of us believe we have fellowship with God? Everybody in this room is spending time with God today. So you all should have your hand up. Now, put your hand up if you think your fellowship with God is perfect, ideal, or flawless. Good, nobody. That's the truth. The diligent practice of prayer is one way to improve your fellowship with God, right? It's the key to relationships. All our relationships require us to talk to each other, right? And that's all prayer is, talking to God and listening to God. I once was told by a senior pastor about a perfect question for opening up any dialogue with a fellow Christian. How's your prayer life? And at the time, I was a student, and I thought, well, that's a silly question. Nobody's going to be able to answer that. Nobody wants to answer that. Those were the thoughts in Jim Kirk's head. And although some Christians may find that intimidating or difficult to answer, it will prompt some valuable conversation that can help both people to grow, right? How's your prayer life, truthfully? God created us to have fellowship with him. God created us to have prayer with him. In Genesis, right at the beginning of God's word, in the garden, God is described described as strolling in the cool evening, looking for the husband and wife, right? Did you ever wonder what that means? He had created this whole environment, the whole garden, to have fellowship with mankind, with humankind, with man and woman. And so he was just strolling, hoping to have some fellowship with them. To have fellowship with God is our created purpose by speaking to, listening for, and walking with God personally. That's fellowship. God wants you and I to share in the kingdom through prayer. There was a Methodist preacher in the early 20th century who wrote these words, and I happen to agree with them. The one concern of the devil is to keep Christians from praying. That's his main concern. 
He fears nothing from prayerless studies, prayerless work, and prayerless religion. He laughs at our toil, mocks at our wisdom, but he trembles when we pray. That's very truthful. Prayer makes Satan tremble. As Christ followers, it's easy to take prayer for granted, especially if we've been Christians for a long, long time. Yeah, I give a blessing before we eat. I thank God for the food. And that's it. That's the only time I pray. So we lose the importance of prayer as a faith practice. Jesus modeled prayer as a priority for us on earth as one of us. Right? In his life, it was a priority. And so should, it should be a priority for us as well. None of us needs to be taught how or when to pray. You know that. You just talk to God. You know how to talk. I know you know how to talk. Right? You talk to each other. How long have you been talking? How many years has it been since you spoke your first word? <laughs> Ed's adding them up in his head. <clears throat> we know how to speak. We know how to listen. We know how to pray as a consequence. Communication is the key to building a strong relationship, and it is certainly important in strengthening our most critical relationship. So how's your prayer life? Can it be better? And if so, how can you work to make it better? Practice these faith disciplines, being spirit-led, studying God's word and prayer. Remember, these practices will not make you perfect, but rather they will help to make you complete in Christ Jesus, spiritually mature. Amen and amen. <clears throat> in our prayer time as we do each week we want to lift up all those people, places, circumstances that are on our hearts and minds trusting that God will answer us in his way and in his time so I'll grab one of those thanks so what's on your hearts and minds? Anyone? Jack. Yeah, hold on. Hold on. He got a, he has to find one that works. Hello. Jack. Gil, right over there. Um, first of all, it's just really good to be back, you know, uh, to be here with you guys today. So it's, it's very nice. It's a big thing for me. Um, second, just a prayer for my work partner, Dustin. Uh, Dustin Lovich, he's in Deer Lakes. Um, he has two young boys, the one's 16, the other one's 11. Um, both his children get bullied extremely bad at school. Uh, the one had reconstructive knee surgery from a girl kicking him. Um, he can't work now. Uh, big depression, already has existing health conditions. Um, and his other son just got ripped out of his chair at school and cracked his head off the desk because the kid wanted to pick on him because he was smaller. Um, so their family's just going through a lot. The school's not willing to help. And uh, really, he just needs, he needs all the help he can get. So that's all. Uh, Justin or Dustin? Dustin. With a D. Yeah. Thanks, Jack. By the way, Jack was in my very first confirmation class. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just want us to remember Bill Rank, and he's going through the pain right now, rehabilitating that knee. So I. I keep in touch with him, and uh, 
he's in the uh, phase of three days a week to physical therapy and two days at home and a lot of icing to keep the swelling down. So keep, keep it, Bill, in our prayers. Thank you, Ed. Karen. So I have a joy that my niece, Emily, um, has a new baby, and her name is Aria. And it's a joy that um, Emily is reconnected with our family, and um, just prayers for Emily and her new baby, and being on the right path. <clears throat> what was the last thing you said? On the right path. Got it. Anyone else? Everybody's pointing at everybody else. Dawn. Um, just a joy that two of my three children are here this weekend. Wonderful. Are Lots these two your favorites? <laughs> if Max is watching. Yeah. Love you, Matt. Well. I'm just Gloria. asking. I'm just asking for prayers that uh, I, I found a new doctor to help me hopefully get this uh, right <clears throat> foot of mine healing in the right direction and get some peace with that. Thank you. Um, tomorrow Daisy. is AJ's birthday. I don't know how old. Are you 16 though. already? <laughs> He'll be 11. AJ, we're going to sing to you no matter what. I just wanted to be thankful to be on the other side of Daisy having five teeth removed. Why we weren't here the last hot minute is her face was as big as a pumpkin and she's only recently been able to go out in public because, you know, she's a cute teenager. So I'm very blessed that it went well and, you know, we're on the recovering side. Thank you. Let's take all of these prayers to God. <clears throat> Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of prayer. We thank you that it is a discipline for us, um, but it, more importantly, it's a way for us to communicate with you, for us to listen to you, for us to dialogue with you, for us to have fellowship with you. So continue to bless our efforts um, in prayer as we lift up those who are on our hearts and minds this day, both joys and concerns. You have heard our prayer requests, um, and there are lots of them, both spoken and unspoken. So we thank you for the joys. We thank you for the blessing, even the blessings of the concerns because it brings us closer to you. It helps us see your hand at work. It helps us rely on you as our creator, as our redeemer, and as our strength. So Lord God, this day, we ask your blessing upon all those in worship, all those celebrating the Lord's Supper, and all those of your people who come together, whether it's on the street, in homes, or in church buildings, that all would come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and celebrate with the practice of worship and the practice of singing and the faith practice of reading scripture 
and talking about what it means in our daily lives. Lord God, these are all practices that you have given us and that you send your Holy Spirit to direct us, to strengthen us, and to help us grow as your disciples, making other disciples. Lord God, we thank you for this day, and we ask your blessing as we celebrate together um, the Lord's Supper and the meaning behind um, the cup and the bread that Jesus gave to us. And we lift up all of these prayers in his name as he taught us to pray these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. We know that people will come from north and south and east and west to sit at table in God's kingdom. We also know that Jesus' closest friends, his disciples, did not recognize him when he reappeared to them. May our eyes be opened to the presence of the living Lord just as their eyes were opened when he took bread and cup and shared it with them. So just as Jesus lifted up his thankful praise, we should lift our thankful praise to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Would you please pray with me? Lord God, it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. You are Lord and God, creator and ruler of the universe. So almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension, you exalted him to sit and reign with you at your right hand. Lord God, pour out your Holy Spirit this day on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, 
All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forevermore. Amen. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior took bread. And after he had given thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Those who believe in me will never hunger. Those who are with me will never thirst. body of Christ given for you. In the same manner, our Lord and Savior took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he poured it out and gave it to his disciples, and it said, drink all of it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me.
Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. <clears throat> the blood of Christ shed for you. Whenever you eat this bread and you drink from this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes again. Please stand if you're able and join me in the prayer after communion. We praise you, O Lord, and give you thanks with all our hearts in the company of your people. You are gracious and merciful. You provide food for those who worship you. You are ever mindful of your covenant. May your praise endure forever. Amen. Please be seated. We know that the Apostle Paul instructed Timothy with these words. Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, not to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Thank you for giving toward the work of God through this body of Christ. Your giving shows your hope in God who has richly provided for every one of us. So let's dedicate our giving to God once again. Lord God, we come to you today having celebrated the Lord's Supper when Jesus gave so much for us and to us. We give to you a portion of what you have blessed our lives with. May you use these gifts and spread these gifts so that the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ would be known and spread and realized and recognized across the world and across the street. Lord God, bless our gifts, bless our giving, bless the giver and receiver, that hearts would be open and that all would come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. For we ask and pray all of these things in his name. Amen. Please stand if you're able and join me in singing our closing hymn, God the Spirit, Guide and Guardian.
Now remember, you go nowhere by accident. Where you go, where you are, where you find yourself, God has placed you there for a purpose. And Jesus Christ living inside of you will prepare you, walk with you, and strengthen you for that per purpose. So go with the love of God, the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the fellowship, guidance, and strength of the Holy Spirit today and every day. Amen.